During the 5th and 6th centuries CE, the Korean peninsula was divided into these three kingdoms that I am yet to learn how to pronounce. But the Silla was the most powerful and wealthy of the three. It was referred to as a city of gold by Chinese emissaries. Today we're going to discuss the gold and jade crown of the Silla kingdom. It was first thought that due to the fragile gold construction of the crowns, it was used exclusively for burial purposes. However, further research has proven otherwise. It was actually used in ceremonial rites as well. In terms of iconography, the tree-shaped crown with several branch-like protrusions exemplifies a sacred tree. This tree was viewed as a world tree, also known as Axis Mundi, which connected heaven and earth. The small discs of golden jade that dangle from the tree-esque protrusions, called gagok, resemble ripe fruits hanging from branches, thus symbolizing fertility and abundance. Furthermore, the additional two antler-like protrusions may refer to the reindeer who were native to the regions just north of the Korean peninsula. Yes, and this shows there was definitely some cultural influences from the Eurasian steppe and beyond. Yes, definitely. Back to what I was mentioning, the reason behind all of these symbols being very nature-esque can be found in the religious roots of the Korean peoples, shamanism. Yes, shamanism basically was comprised of a main leader called a shaman who would have entered an altered state of mind to help his people live harmoniously with the universe. In fact, shamanism could be considered a predecessor to Buddhism in that Siddhartha Gautama sought to reach nirvana which involved becoming one with nature. Also, these crowns would have adorned the forehead of the shaman. This could reflect the knowledge and the sacred nature of the world tree literally stemmed out of the mind of the shaman. And these crowns would have been buried in the mound-shaped tombs of the shaman to exemplify their social status and holiness, but also for the shaman to enjoy in the afterlife. In terms of cross-cultural connections, the Korean Peninsula was at the end of the Silk Road and it had access to several other cultures. Yes, and because of this they received materials, techniques, and ideas both artistic and philosophical from cultures as far as Western Europe. In addition, Sitho-Siberian peoples of the Eurasian steppe created golden diadems a lot like this crown. For example, the Tilya Tepe, an ancient burial site in modern-day Afghanistan, depicts five tree-like protrusions, floral ornaments, and reflective discs as well, showing how both cultures, though separated by thousands of miles, attested to shaman beliefs and went to the extents of portraying them in their artwork. Another piece that exemplifies both the ideas of wealth and symbols of nature could be found in 5th century BCE Peru in an accessory called the Nose Ornament of Chavin de Quantar. A nose ring like this would have been worn by an elite to show not only their wealth and power, but also to express their belief of the Chavin religion to their community. Yes, and this religion also involved worshipping nature and that many of their gods and goddesses were symbolic of natural processes such as fertility and creation. What's interesting about this particular piece is that it is one of the first known examples of a combination of wealth and religion. Which is exactly what we see in the later piece Gold and Jade Crown. 